Hey guys, so this is the part 2 of measurement of physical quantities for the AS syllabus for physics under 5 minutes. We have already talked about some derived quantities such as speed and volume and today we will learn to derive some common units. So let's start off with Newton. We know that Newton can be defined as F is equal to MA and we know mass is measured in kg and acceleration is measured in meters per second square. And note how kg, meter and second all three are SI units and that should be the case. Therefore, Newton can be said to be kg meter per second square. Now, you can also do the same thing with W is equal to mg. The criteria is just to have a formula which involves the unit Newton, that is force. Now, we move on to Pascal and Pascal is the unit for pressure. So you can use any formula that involves pressure. I will be using P is equal to F over A. Just as we did, force is kg meter per second square and area is meter square. And so after cutting this, we get kg meter per second square. Now we move on to joules. Joules is the unit for energy. So the formula that I will be using is work done, which is equal to F into D because work done is also measured in joules. We know that force is measured as kg per uh, kg meter per second square and d is measured in meters which is the distance traveled in the direction of the force so you get kg meter square per second square let's move on to watts which is the unit for power now power can be defined as w over time where w is again joules in measuring joules which is f into d if you want to simplify it and f is measured in kg meter per second square and d is basically meters now you divide all of that with seconds and now you just simplify it and you get kg meter square per second square divided by s which all together means that watts is equal to kg meter square s minus 3. Now let's move on to coulombs which is the unit for basically charge. We know that q is equal to it where current is an si unit and therefore it is measured in amperes and time as it is is measured in seconds note how we are using only si units and therefore coulomb can be defined as ampere second now let's talk about volts so we know that volts is basically it's equal to the potential difference which is work done per unit charge and work done just as we did is, did is f into d where f is kg meter square and you know all together becomes kg meter squares minus 2 and q is basically ampere second just as we did and you just need to simplify this further and you get kg meter square s minus 3 and amp per ampere or ampere raised to the power minus 1. Now let's move on to resistance. So resistance is V over I and we just did volt uh, which is kg meter square S minus 3 and per ampere or A minus 1. So I'm going to write that down and then divide this by amperes because remember current is an SI unit. So I don't really need to derive its quantity in SI units. And so my answer is kg meter square S minus 3 A minus 2. Now we move on to specific heat capacity. We know that Q is equal to mc delta theta where m is the mass measured in kgs and c is what we want to find out uh, and delta c is uh, sorry delta theta is measured in kg uh, sorry in kelvin or in degrees celsius. I'll take kelvin in this case and well Q is the energy so the units are joules and we have already learned that joules is kg meter squares minus 2. All you have to do is now make C the subject of this equation and you are good to go. So that would be C is equal to kg meter square S minus 2 divided by kg into Kelvin. Simplify that up and you will end up with the C is equal to uh, meter square S minus 1 K minus 1. Now, these were just some of the common units that you are expected to know for the P1 and P2. I would suggest you memorize all of them and if not, be very, very fluent in uh, deriving these. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. In the next video, we will be learning about homogeneous equations and the homogeneity test.